eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and death. What truth can calm the troubled soul? God is good, God is good. Where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears are cries, who stands above the stormy trial, who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, sing hallelujah. Springs eternal, oh, sing hallelujah. Now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and death. Unto the grave, what will we see? Christ, He lives, Christ, He lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with Him, there we will rise to meet the Lord, then sin and death will be destroyed, and we will feast in this joy when Christ is ours forevermore. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess Christ our hope. up the tempo with that. All right, let's go ahead and go, uh, yes, I will. Yes, I will. How are you? Good. <laughs> All right. What side is that on? Is that on there? Uh, no, it's not on there. It's going to be on there. <laughs> let's get, yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails, it will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the Lord. your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails, 
miles will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who never is late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. All right. Yeah. Yeah, y'all can come join us now. And then uh, because he lives just two verses, the first one from the verses from the Song of Lyrics, and also in the Song of Solomon. I think, I think we're going to do a Song of Solomon this week. So great verse. Stop.
All right, good evening. What a great meal that was. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and, uh, but now let's stand and, and uh, tell you what, take a moment to say hello to some folks around you who hadn't already done that and uh, encourage some people around you, okay? Hello, folks. Am I good? Hey, Shelby, switch that back over, if you don't mind. Click it one more time. Let's sing. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone. Christ alone, what is our only confidence? That our souls to Him belong. What holds our days within His hand? What comes apart from His command? And what will keep us through?
they're coming out there to <laughs> receive your um, prayer requests and praises. Uh, let me remind you, if you want to get a car decal, they've got them in the sound booth, $5, Grace Baptist Church decal. I'd like to saturate this town with uh, advertisements that uh, we're here. That's a great way to do it. Some churches are using the yard signs and other things, their T-shirts, but we've come up with this idea. And so if you're interested, get you a car decal. Um, looking at the prayer list and um, maybe you have some updates on some folks or some um, additional requests. And uh, we'll alternate praises and prayer requests again tonight. So for every prayer request, I want to ha have a praise in between. Um, so we'll start back there at Kathy. praises. This is my sister-in-law. This is Kevin's sister, and I have not seen her. She has not been here since Kevin has passed away, and we are just having a wonderful time. Wow. Then are you, we, you staying with her for a little while? For a week. Okay, great. And she came to the card ministry yesterday. Oh, wonderful. And awesome. we've been praying for a filing cabinet. And the Lord answered that prayer and gave us a new filing cabinet with a lock for the, for the card ministry. The third prayer request, I have to thank you, my pastor, for giving me the calendar of the missionaries. Because Kathy and I sent out 54 letters to the Northern Missions. And I got an email last night from one of those missionaries and he thanked me for that card and gave the children's birthdays and everything and had I said if you have special needs please let us know so we can pray he had 12 needs wow and so maybe we can highlight them in the bulletin in, yeah, or awesome. something or in the prayer next time we have a missionary check, uh, calendar and I gave that to Kathy for the card ministry and if y'all didn't hear what she said, they sent out 54 letters to our missionaries, and one of them has already responded, thanking them for encouraging them with a the letter. So that's awesome. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all for doing that. It means so very much to them, I know. I got a prayer request for a friend of ours from when I was uh, stationed in uh, Knob Nostra, Missouri. Her name is Wendy. Bazanga, she's already a cancer survivor. She had a stroke the day before yesterday. Um, she's only 48, but because of all the prayers, God has heard us and praised the Lord. She's been moved out of ICU. Her, she's not going to have to have a stent in her neck, and she has recovered all her speech and is recovering um, strength on her right side. So, prayer awesome. and praise. Praise the Lord, yeah. I have a prayer request. I go for a um, follow-up mammogram from the biopsy that I had done in July this Friday. So I would appreciate prayers for that, please. Is that routine or is that? No, it was, I had a questionable mammogram this summer and they did a biopsy and the findings were benign, um, but they did want to follow up with it just to make sure that everything was stable and still looked that way. So um, right, that is Friday morning at 1030. Let's pray for Jessica Friday morning as she goes for that test. Okay, just a praise that I'm through with chemo and feeling much better, and I'll start radiation tomorrow for 25 days. Every, every, every you driving? Day. I cannot drive yet. Well, we're glad you're here. Glad you're feeling a little bit so, better. Do you need people to take you around? Do you? Would that be helpful? You got enough people to help? All right. Well, if you if you run short, if y'all. If anyone wants to drive him around, we'll drive him crazy one. Brother Tim, they have changed the date on Ernie's surgery. He took, he took his pre-op test and his sugar was too high and doctor, um, uh, won't, the doctor won't do it if it's, if it's too high. So he's got to get his A1C down before December 6th. So y'all pray for him. It's tough. They, they push it till when? December 6th? December 6th. He's not a happy camper, so. 
But anyway, uh, I have a prayer request uh, for Joe Bowman, the family of Joe Bowman. He's got cancer. He's a, uh, he's a classmate of Brenda, Brenda Wells and, and, and mine and, and Doug's. And, and he's, they're struggling. And, uh, but uh, it's a brain, type of brain cancer. So just keep his wife Claudia and him in, in y'all's prayers. And another prayer request, people in our, our age group, you know, it just seems like they're dropping like flies. Uh, I found out today that a Roger Dunnigan that we went to school with, that I occasionally see when I go to Shelbyville, passed away unexpectedly over the weekend. But I'm going to give you a little synopsis of this. His life, he, he and Ernie ran together a little bit back in the 60s, and they were kind of, they were wild. <laughs> and, and then he later on got saved. And it, he, he uh, was a deacon at the church that he attends in Shelbyville for like 20 something years. And it, 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 I told Ernie today, I said, you know, his death, it's a sad thing for his family and all, cause, but God can change people, y'all. You know, just keep praying for him. Just pray every day for him, cause Ernie changed and Roger changed, you know. And so, um, and there's so many more I could just list that we've prayed for and people have prayed for and they've changed, so. Amen. Just pray for me with my daughter. She's given me a lot of trouble lately. Your, uh, one of your daughters or your real daughter? Or? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Pray for Kelly and her daughter. Uh, Rob said that he had an MRI done on his shoulder, and, and there's uh, there's a mass, but it's not cancer. So that's 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 good. That's a praise that he wanted us to know about. So, Rob Bell. Praise the Lord for Calvin and Linda joining Sunday. Amen. Calvin's up here playing. Linda's right there on the third row. Glad to have them. Um, I've got a praise. Our my, mine and Matthew, one of our nieces, that's Millie Miles' age, um, I think we have mentioned before her growth plate. She was having issues with her growth plate. Um, they, they went back to the doctor today, and it was totally good news. Um, it was a second opinion. I don't know how to explain it all. But she's not going to need those two surgeries that we thought she was going to need. Oh, so great. it's a huge, huge praise. Great. Amen. Back, back there to Fred. Getting over there to Fred there, Hernaro. I just want an update on your eye. It's been a week since you noticed. Yeah, um, I called the doctor again today. Um, they, they don't seem worried. Um, it's um, very frustrating. Um, but... Um, they just told me to be patient, give it a year. They said it's the worst kind of detachment because it totally detached. Um, and uh, they said it's a miracle that I'm seeing as well as I am right now, so I didn't realize that. But um, they said I'll have ups and downs for the next year. Um, I think the drops might be irritating my eyes because they, they stay red and itchy and kind of, uh, bother me there, but um, and water a lot, and she said that's all part of it. So, anyway, thanks for asking. Uh, David Hess, he uh, played baseball here at Tullahoma, and he played for the Orioles and the Marlins. He's got cancer. Uh, he's 28 years old, and um, he's going through chemo right now. And they're, I hadn't got an update. His dad sent me an email the other day. Uh, he's just somebody I coached for a, a couple of teams. He's a really good young man. Just keep him in your prayers. What kind of cancer David, is that, Mike? I don't know. Not sure? Not sure. David Ness. David Hess. Who's got the mic? Michael? 
Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody an update. Um, I think my mother-in-law spoke last week about some of the stuff that I was going through. Um, they did the abdomen CT last week to try to find um, where they suspect I'm bleeding from. Uh, I've become anemic all of a sudden. Um, so um, we went to a hematologist on Monday. Uh, all my blood work was fine aside from my blood count, which was extremely low. Um, so they're gonna do an iron infusion the next two Thursdays uh, to try to perk me back up. And uh, they also talked about doing further testing uh, after the fact for some of the other symptoms I'm having. But uh, hopefully tomorrow starts to turn the corner a little bit. And uh, they're also going to do uh, uh, upper GI scope and potentially a colonoscopy to try to figure out where I'm bleeding from um, and repair that. So uh, hopefully we start to turn the corner and I start to feel normal again. So uh, I appreciate all the prayers. Keep Michael Boatman in your prayers. Your inspiration just to be around, you know, because because you, if you felt bad, as bad as you do. But you're going to be Iron Man after the next couple of Thursdays, right? Brother Tim, I just want to thank the church for the prayers for Jonathan. We do have a little progress and uh, he is home. Uh, got a long way to go, but uh, I do appreciate the, the prayers of the church. I've been going through a little junk, shall I say, over the past few weeks. So I begun to ask the Lord what was going on. And here's what I came up with, impressed with in the middle of the night that the enemy will use anything to quiet our praise of the Lord and he will use anything or anyone to hinder our witness for the Lord or to destroy our witness for the Lord. So it behooves us to be careful. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Continue to remember Jonathan Smith. Great crowd tonight. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Yeah. Hey, folks, I, I want you to be uh, prayerful for the associational revival. Shelby, if you can find that slide in the, in the announcements section, in the rolling announcements there. Um, this, to me, this is an opportunity to have like a spectacular Sunday type experience with, uh, with Michael Catt preaching. And, uh, and, but be able to, uh, instead of uh, having a different speaker over several uh, weeks, it's, uh, it's the same speaker, but different churches <laughs> and different music. So uh, the first night will be over at, at uh, First Baptist uh, Manchester. Uh, Todd Green will be leading the music there. And, and then the second night will be here at Grace. And then the third uh, night uh, on Tuesday night will be at Oaklawn in Winchester. So, uh, I mean, this is a great opportunity here. Fantastic uh, speaker. So uh, uh, a spectacular Sunday's level type uh, preacher, so so don't miss that, miss that opportunity uh, to be a part of those things. Encourage your friends to go and be part of it too. You might have friends in different parts of the of the uh, of those uh, of the association there that in those towns, and and uh, it's just gonna be worth it. And again, to remind you that Michael Cat was the pastor of Sherwood Baptist Church that made all those uh, wonderful Christian movies and produced them, and he's now retired, and he is. Uh, available to do revivals and other things. So we're very fortunate to be able to get him to come to our association. And Brother Mark, rather than one church hosting all three nights, he, he moved it around. Um, once in Manchester, once in Tullahoma, and once in Winchester. Aaron? Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing, just by what several people have talked about already tonight, about how people can change and how the devil does come to take things away from us. And, and through just listening to everybody, and we've got Iron Man going to be here, and then we've got Radiation Man over here. He's going to be glowing for the next couple of weeks. And a lot of you all, and probably... None of you other than 
Mr. Waller here tonight knows a lot about Shauna and I's story. But we went through a program a year and a half ago. <laughs> and a person that spoke gave her testimony over 50 years worth of an addiction problem. And the verse that she continued her entire time talking about her testimony was John 10.10. 10. And she kept over and over, the thief comes to only steal and kill and destroy. And she repeated that verse, what, babe? About 50 times, I mean, and just over and over again. But one of the messages that we listen to every morning, we, we listen to a certain speaker every morning on our way in when our, our devotion, and it just laid on my heart one day, and I kept saying it over and over again. I was like, John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And folks, I'm not a new Christian. I'm on this side of my salvation, but I've been in church my entire life. And I never took the 30 seconds that it took to look up John 10.10. 10. And if you've never heard about it, please don't ask me because I'm studying it myself and looking at it myself. But one of the best things in the Bible are the buts of the Bible. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up on your Google or wherever you look up things, the buts of the Bible. Because John 10.10 John, John 10 is there. The thief comes to only steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. Amen. Amen. And so just talking about people changing, and Shauna has been where you are. She has had the, the infusions, the iron infusions over and over again. She still has them. My former wife has been where you are. And it's hard. I know where you're at. So, folks, we got to remember, we got to throw those praises out there. Amen. The praises have got to be there because we will fall right into the middle of doom and despair just like everybody else out there that doesn't have Jesus or doesn't know Jesus or maybe even does know Jesus, but they've fallen into that hole. Amen. And we as a church family will fall right there with them if we just sit in this house of God every Wednesday and talk about how the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. But I have come to give life and give it more abundant. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> he just said, Aaron, we need to switch places. So. I think he just did preach. Anybody else? That's Bob. Okay, somebody over here. John. Uh, I've got a praise report. Uh, Shonda Nix, she's my nephew's wife. I think she's about 43, 44. She's been fighting cancer for 13 years. And it hadn't been easy. Uh, started out with breast cancer, went to bone cancer, went to brain cancer. She's gone through every test. She's done everything that there is to do. She's even gone through experimental tests. And, and the other day they were checking her markers and her markers are lower than they've ever been in 13 years. She's not cancer free, but she's a lot better off today than she was. Thank wow. you. Bob? I'd just like to praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I'd, I'd like to, usually I brag on my wife, but I'd like to brag on, on you and the other pastors that we have. It's just awesome. Uh, Sunday was such an awesome Sunday with uh, your message and then the way uh, Pastor Michael brought the music in to just come right alongside of it. What a blessing. And then the, the number that the choir did, awesome. Just, I just want to thank you all for your ministry and, and uh, AP with his music, doing the piano and all the in instrumentalists. It, it, we're just so blessed and I just thank God for, for
for each and every one of you. I can't thank you enough. And can't thank God enough. Amen. Amen. I've said it on Facebook. Uh, I publicly bragged on Michael because, uh, you know, ministers, we hear the bad things a lot, but we don't hear the good things. So I'll publicly brag on him again. Where'd he go? Here he is. Uh, I have no peripheral, so he's back there somewhere. Uh, uh, anyway, it was a great day. It was a, one of the best worship services I've ever been a part of, and I've been in church since nine months before I was born. Um, it was tremendous. I felt the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, Calvin was pointing out that he's going to be having hip replacement in December, toward the end of December, so uh, that's certainly a, a traumatic thing, but pray for him as he gets ready for that in the next uh, couple months. All right, singers, y'all come on back up, and I think we're going to head on toward our time of prayer. Would you bow with me as we continue in this uh, spirit of thanksgiving in this spirit of intercession. Uh, God, we know that, that prayer and praise scare the dickens out of the devil. The devil doesn't care if we just show up and have worship because churches and people do that week after week after week and nothing happens. The devil doesn't care if we show up and come to Sunday school and hang around for worship and then we go and go about our little duties and our weekly schedule. But it scares him when God's people pray. It scares him when God's people lift the roof off with praises. And so, Lord, we, we know that we experienced a tremendous day of worship Sunday. We indeed reached a great crescendo and the Spirit was evident. We could feel you present, Lord. We know that you are pleased. And we, we offered up that sweet aroma of adoration and praise and thanksgiving to you during our time of worship and during the time of the preaching of your word. We know we didn't see a whole lot of fruit. We do thank you for those two that joined our church. And we know that uh, many more should have come and could have come, but they didn't. But uh, I know that uh, the seeds were planted and I know that the harvest will come. We may be in a planting stage right now. We may be in a watering stage right now, but we know that your word is true, that the harvest will come. And we just pray, Lord, that we'll be ready for that harvest and that we will receive all of those folks as they make commitments to you, as they join the church, they come for baptism. Whatever you want to do in their hearts and lives, we, we're going to thank you in advance for the harvest that we are going to see in the coming days. We pray for our associational revival. Thank you, Lord, that we don't just have a pencil pusher for a director of missions, but he cares about missions and ministry and revival, and he plans mission trips, and he does whatever he can to uh, network churches together and uh, come up with fresh new ideas, block party trailers, and uh, disaster relief counseling centers for, uh, for Christians, and uh, we thank you for this idea that you impressed upon his heart to have revival in the association. We pray that folks will show up and folks will be revived and it'll be a start of something really fresh and really neat and really new. We pray for Dr. Michael Catt as he comes to, to lead. And then we pray for the three churches that'll be hosting and also taking care of the music. We pray that uh, people will be excited about this. We thank you for praises, Lord. We thank you for answered prayers. We thank you that uh, uh, we're seeing you at work and we thank you that you're transforming lives and that you have come to give us abundant life, not just eternal life in the future, but abundant life in the present. People get, get confused sometimes and think all we have to look forward is abundant life in the future, but you came to give us abundant life in the present as well. 
And so uh, we are to live with joy and not let the thief, the, the, thief the, the devil, steal our joy or rob us of our witness. So surround us, Lord, with your angels and keep us bold and courageous as we stand out for you and stand up for you. Be with those folks, Lord, that are still hurting and those that are bereaved and sick and lonely and lost especially. All of us here know somebody that's lost. We have lost members in our families. We have lost people that we rub shoulders with every day. And God, may we be a light to them in the midst of the darkness. May you just shine through us and help us to point them to Jesus and the cross. We pray, Lord, that we would open our mouth and we would invite them. We would, when the door is open, share the gospel with them. We pray, thank you for this good crowd. We, we, we pray that many others will come in the days to come as Satan tried to rob us of our, of our joy and, and our family members here at church through this COVID and everything else. But people are coming back and we are seeing that you are prevailing in the midst of that. Thank you, Lord, that you are in charge. Thank you that you have a perfect plan. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers. We lift them to you. We lift our praises to you as we continue to sing tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we go switch that back to the stage of you, please? Sir.
you probably know the story, but the, the hymn writer of, of, of It Is Well With My Soul had lost his family in a tragic uh, uh, sinking of a ship. And uh, he wrote this song out of that tragedy. So as we think about the tragedies that we go through, maybe the, the, the loss of loved ones, uh, I hope that, that you find strength in this. When peace Now that truck or treat's over, the next thing that uh, we need to shoot for is the Operation Christmas Child. So um, I want to encourage you again to pack your box. Um, you can do it online, $25. And as Kim shared Sunday, it's a blessing if you will do that yourself. But 
if for some reason you're not able to do that on the computer yourself, then uh, we'll be glad to do that for you here in the office. A Baptist preacher was visiting in one of his church members' homes. When all of a sudden the 10-year-old son ran in with a dead rat. He proudly showed this dead rat to his mother. And as she shrank in horror, he attempted to reassure her. Don't worry, Mama, it's dead. We beat him with a baseball bat, I shot him with a BB gun, and we stomped him, and he's deader than dead. And then about that time, that boy turned around and saw his preacher sitting in the living room, and he said, and then the good Lord called him home. <laughs> well, last Wednesday night, we talked about how a Christian is to deal with sickness. And um, we got some ideas from the scriptures about how we are to react and act. Tonight, I want to talk about how Christians are to deal with death. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes these words. But I do not want you to be ignorant Brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now most of the time we, we hear that passage of Scripture and we talk about the second coming. Tonight, I want us to think about that passage of Scripture in light of how we are to deal with death. Now none of us like to talk about death. None of us like to think about death because we just simply don't like death. I mean... I've heard of wedding crashers, people that go to weddings just for the food and just for the party, but I don't really think there's a lot of people out there that are funeral crashers that just go to a funeral just to say they went to a funeral. It's like in the movie Forrest Gump. He said, Mama always said dying was a part of life, but I sure wish it wasn't. Of all the tasks that I perform, one of the most difficult, one of the, 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 the toughest tasks that I perform is funerals. I don't enjoy preaching funerals. I don't like going to funerals, and you don't either. We don't like to bury our loved ones. We don't like to bury our friends. We don't like to think about death. And I can't help but think about what Woody Allen, the comedian, said. He said, I know I'm going to die someday. I just don't want to be there when it happens. That's kind of the way we feel, right? We, we know we're going to die, we just don't want to be there when it happens. None of us like death. But yet, every day we have to deal with it, don't we? Every day, people that we know and love walk through the turnstile into eternity. Every newspaper has an obituary section. Every funeral director stays busy. Caskets are constantly being made. Graves are constantly being dug. Cremations are constantly being uh, taking place. Everywhere we turn, death stalks the land. Disease kills in spite of all the advance of modern medicine. Accidents, heart attacks, cancer, stroke, COVID robs us of our family members and our friends. Death is all around us. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, the death sentence was pronounced upon not only them, but the entire human race. And so unfortunately, death is something that we all have to deal with. It is inevitable and it is impartial. It is coming to us all. 
Death is no respecter of persons. It is no respecter of position, power, possessions, or prestige. But the Bible affirms that death is not the end. Like the old Garth, uh, like the old Brooks and Dunn song, tell me, does it all end in a slow ride in a hearse? No. There's more after death, right? There's a, a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And I want you to look at verse 13. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Now, here the Apostle Paul likens death to falling asleep. He says uh, that, that hey, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that fall asleep, those who are asleep. The Greek word is komeo I. Komeo I. And, and we get our English words coma, we get our English words comatose, and our English words cemetery from this here Greek word. You see, Paul is reminding us that, that we struggle and we strain and we worry and we fret every day and we get tired and we get burned out and we get worn out, but then God puts us to sleep for a little while and then we wake up in glory. Elizabeth Barrett Browning said her favorite verse in the Bible was Psalm 127.2, God giveth his beloved sleep. When Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are com como amea, that is the same word that Jesus used in John chapter 11 when he said that our friend Lazarus just sleeps. But he said, I'm going to wake him up. And so you see, for a Christian, death is a form of sleep, right? Those who study our reactions to death say that we deal with death in five stages. First of all, we're in shock. As soon as we, we hear about somebody dying, we're in shock. I can't believe he's gone. I can't believe she's gone. We're just in shock, right? The second stage we go through is denial. I don't believe she's really dead. I, I, I think this is a bad dream. Somebody wake me up. We're in shock. Then we're in denial. And then we get angry. Why did she die? Why did God take him from me? And then we become depressed and sad and lonely and then finally, at some point, we have to accept it and move on with our lives the best we can. And knowing these grief stages will help us to understand our emotional swings and our mood changes. So how is a Christian supposed to deal with death? Well, the scripture tells us there are three secrets, okay? The first thing, the first way we should deal with death is we should respond with tears. Now, some of you are saying, no kidding, Pastor. Tell me something I don't know. But it's not that simple. In our society today, people aren't given permission to cry. Do you realize that? Our society especially says that men are not supposed to cry. That is not true. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 4 said there is a time to weep. Crying does not mean that you are a sissy. I have a friend, and, and John Rickman knows who, I, who he is, Joe Coble. He's one of the most sensitive men that I know. I admire him greatly. He cries and he makes no dibs about it. He, he, he lets it out when, when he gets to the point where he needs to cry. In the Bible, we find Abraham weeping over Sarah's death. We read where Joseph threw himself upon his father, weeping and kissing him when he died. David wept over the deaths of his baby and Amnon and Abner and Absalom Jesus wept when he found out that Lazarus had died. So it is normal, it is perfectly okay for us to cry when somebody we know dies. It is a part of the healing process. When Kim and I were teenagers, a boy in our youth group committed suicide. We went to the funeral. And after the service, my family went to his house. And his dad greeted us at the door and his, the dad's first response was to reach out and hug us and we could see that he was on the verge of tears. And then he caught himself. He, he regained his composure. And it's almost that he told, it was almost like he told himself, it is improper for me to cry, so I've got to suck it up. 
Some gifts commented on how they admired the parents' ability to handle their son's tragic and untimely death with such victory and celebration. But I left feeling something was missing. That man and his wife were robbed of something. They needed to cry. And I remember when my dad died, how I sat in my room and wept and how I was angry because my brother, little brother, was out back playing basketball. To my knowledge, my little brother still hasn't ever cried or dealt with the sorrow of our dad's passing. Folks, God is in control of everything, and we, it is okay for us to cry. The shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, says, Jesus wept. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When a Christian dies, we put the body in a casket and we either bury the body or we burn the body. But the real person, the spirit, the soul has left that worn out body down here and gone up there to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And when a Christian dies, they go immediately to be with the presence of the Lord. But that does not mean that we are to be cold and callous and without emotion. Christians need to grieve. It's part of the healing process. We need to shed tears. But Paul reminds us in our scripture tonight that we do not sorrow as those who have no hope. We shed tears for ourselves because we're selfish. We miss our loved one. We miss our friend. But really deep down we're happy for them because we know they're with Jesus. And so Christians should not feel embarrassed or feel like it's a sin or feel like it's a sign of weakness or feel like they're being a sissy if they cry. We, it is perfectly okay to respond with tears. We should respond with tears. Secondly, we should respond with trust. Our trust is based on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. On the words that he himself said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Now when Jesus makes a promise, he keeps it. Amen, church? How many of you believe the Bible and what it says? What does Psalm 23, 4 say? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Notice it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, in order for them, there to be a shadow, there's got to be a light. And that means the light of Jesus, and the, he is right there with us, Right? We don't have to be afraid because our trust is in the Lord. Christians rely on God's revelation, not human speculation. And the scriptures say that Jesus will either come for us or we'll go to be with him. Either way is fine, right? The biggest difference between Christians and lost people is that Christians know where they're going to spend eternity. We know that we are safe in the arms of Jesus Lost people have nothing to look forward to except an eternity in a devil's hell. Christians face death by putting their hope and trust in the Lord. Years ago, I was asked to preach a revival at First Baptist Summitville on the other side of Manchester. And uh, I went there to preach the revival. And uh, while I was there preaching that revival Sunday through Wednesday, I met a, a, a wonderful man, an elderly man named Stacy. And uh, Stacy was such a joy to be around. At, in his earlier years, Stacy used to lead <clears throat> the music for that church. But his health wouldn't let him do that anymore. And on Wednesday night, after the revival was over, I'll never forget, he shook my hand and he told me goodbye in, in a unique way. He said, Brother Tim... I don't know if I'll see you here on this earth again, but I know one thing, I'll see you in heaven someday. That's the kind of trust that we should respond with when we face death, right? If we are a believer and we know that they were a believer, we should respond with trust and knowing that we shall see them again. Thirdly, we should respond to death with triumph. Jesus 
is the victor. Jesus is the champion of all champions, right? And death is a time of victory and triumph for Christians. Verse 18 says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. These verses remind us that death is a triumph. When a Christian dies, they are simply promoted to the heavenly places. I understand when those who serve in the ranks of the Salvation Army die, they are listed not under the headings of death, but under the headings of promotion. They are simply promoted to glory. You see, the Bible assures us that Jesus had defeated the devil's power over death and has set us free from the power and the fear of death. Hebrews 2 and verse 13 says, I will put my trust in him for everyone thought death could destroy him, but he had the power to conquer death. You see, our triumph has been secured. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55 and following says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do Christians respond to death? In the midst of tears, with confident trust, we celebrate because we know we're going to triumph. Jesus has kept his promise. Jesus is reliable. You can count on Jesus. And we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, right? There was the Apostle Paul who said, For me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. But if I die, it will be my gain. In other words, he said, Death is a graduation day. It's the day that Christians are promoted to heaven. In my first church that I pastored, we had adult one Sunday school class. We had adult two Sunday school class. We had adult three Sunday school class. And we had the adult four Sunday school class. Each of them had an age bracket. They, they, were, uh, they were each um, like 30 to 45 year olds and then 46 to 50 year olds, 55 year olds, whatever. But that's, that adult four class was 65 to heaven. 65 to heaven. Because someday they knew they were going to be promoted to heaven, right? When Helm Funeral Home in Murfreesboro burned down several years ago, J.C. Helm rebuilt the business with a drive through viewing window. I don't know why he did it, said Wendy Hellam, his daughter, who took over the family business after her father died, but he had a vision for the future. The funeral home's drive through service allows motorists to view bodies without getting out of their cars. Families stand outside the viewing window like she is right here, and they greet visitors as they drive through just like you do uh, at a fast food joint. It works very well, says Newman, who says Helm is the only funeral home in Murfreesboro to offer this kind of service. Helm Funeral Home is trying to provide an alternative for people who don't want to get close to death. But even the convenience of a drive through window cannot take the sting out of death. Only the victory of the empty tomb can enable us to say, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, but thanks be to God who has given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we as Christians have the utmost confidence in Christ, and we, when we face death, we should respond to it with tears and with trust and with triumph. Do we have all the answers to death and the afterlife? No. People have asked me many questions over the years. Tell me what it's going to be like. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. Tell me what the scriptures say about this. Tell we don't know all the answers. It's like the story of the Christian man who got cancer. And he went to see his physician. He said, doctor, although I'm a Christian, I'm afraid to die. I don't know what's going to happen to me when I die. He said, could you tell me what is going to happen? The Christian doctor thought for a moment and he replied, I'm afraid I can't give you an exact answer to that question. As the doctor turned 
to leave the room, he suddenly heard the sound of scratching and whining on the other side of the door. Suddenly he realized he left his car window down and his little dog in the car. Apparently his little pet poodle had jumped out of the car and run and started scratching on the door. With the patient's permission, he let in his pet poodle who leaped on him with gladness. In a flash, the doctor's mind was awakened to a spiritual truth he had never put before into words. Turning to the sick and dying man, he said, Did you see how my dog just acted? He has never been in this room before. He had no idea what was in here. Yet when I opened the door, he ran in without fear because he knew his master was here. As Christians, we don't know all the details about heaven that await us. We don't know everything there is to know about death, but we know that our master is there and that should be enough. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much that you have an answer for everything. Whether it's how to deal with worry or depression or anger or sickness or death or any of the other things that we're going to talk about in the days to come, there's an answer right there between those two leather bindings. Thank you that there's a way to respond, a proper way to respond, and that you're teaching us the ways to respond and how to deal with these various things as we're going through this study on Wednesday nights. If we don't currently need this, help us to tuck it away and come back to it someday when we do need it. That we are to respond with tears. We are to respond with trust. We are to respond with triumph. We sorrow not as the world sorrows, but or those that have no hope because our hope is in you and you are the resurrection and the life. Even though we may die, we shall live forever. If our faith and trust is in you, we shall live on and on and on and on with you in heaven. That's what we got to look forward to. And that's why we got to get out there and share the message with those that we love and care about so that they can be there in eternity as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come to choir. Come to Christmas choir. And uh, Christmas is just around the corner now. And uh, in between there is Thanksgiving. So, again, don't forget to uh, pack a shoebox for some child. Make it their, make their Christmas very, very special, okay? 
Thank you all for being here tonight. We'll just end in a spirit of uh, prayer and a spirit of praise as we're dismissed. God bless you all.